Lesson 3 for October 12 to 18, God's Call, read by Dr. Percy Harold. Friday, October 18. From the book Desire of Ages, page 234, we read, The time of Christ's coming, his anointing by the Holy Spirit, his death, and the giving of the gospel to the Gentiles were definitely pointed out. It was the privilege of the Jewish people to understand these prophecies and to recognize their fulfillment in the mission of Jesus. Christ urged upon his disciples the importance of prophetic study. Referring to the prophecy given to Daniel in regard to this time, he said, Whoso readeth, let him understand. Matthew twenty four fifteen. After his resurrection, he explained to the disciples in all the prophets, the things concerning himself, Luke twenty four twenty seven. The Saviour had spoken through all the prophets. The Spirit of Christ, which was in them, testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. 1 Peter 1, verse 11, end of quote. And that brings us to our three discussion questions for this week. One, dwell more on this idea of God's calling you to do something that you love to do. What are some principles you could follow to know that you are doing God's will, not just in the case of something you love to do, but in general? Two, read the story of Jonah and how he responded to God's calling in his life. What lessons can we take from his experience? At the same time, contrast what Jonah did to what Paul did when he was called by the Lord. What were some of the major differences between them? And we'll read about Paul in Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 20. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus, and he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now, there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias said, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem, and here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel, for I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. So, when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son 
of God. And question three, from the book Desire of Ages, page 716, we read, The history of Judas presents the sad ending of a life that might have been honoured of God. Had Judas died before his last journey to Jerusalem, he would have been regarded as a man worthy of a place among the twelve, and one who would be greatly missed. End of quote. Think about the story of Judas Iscariot. Was his calling to betray Jesus? If so, how fair would that be to him? How can we understand Judas and the opportunities he had in contrast to what he eventually ended up doing? What lessons can we take away from his story about the power of free choice in our lives? Inside Story Our mission story this week is titled Japanese Pastor Finds $30,000. It's by Andrew McChesney of Adventist Mission. A large water bill shocked Japanese church leaders in Tokyo. Astonished that the bill had doubled from the previous month, leaders of the Amanuma Seventh-day Adventist Church contacted the water company and soon learned that an underground pipe had burst and was spewing water. The water pipe could not be repaired, and the water company advised the church to install an above-ground water pipe. The cost, 7 million yen, or about US $70,000. Moreover, church leaders faced another major expense. They needed to raise 16 million yen, that's US $160,000, to purchase equipment so their church could be one of 161 sites across Japan participating in the 2018 evangelistic meetings. Complicating matters, church members weren't enthusiastic about the evangelistic meetings, complaining that the expense and work were too much. It was very stressful, said Koyochi Miyazaki, the first elder of the Amanuma church. The church board met to pray about the water pipe. Immediately after the prayer, the church's associate pastor, Mayunghun Ra, went to his office On the desk, he found 3 million yen. That's 30,000 US dollars in cash. Ra, a missionary from South Korea, was thrilled, and he excitedly broke the news to the other church board members. The next Sabbath, he announced the need for the water pipe to the congregation. He told how the 3 million yen had appeared in his office, and he appealed for more contributions. A short time later, a surprise appeared in the Sabbath school offering plate, an envelope containing 1 million yen, that's 10,000 US dollars. Church leaders were delighted, but they worried that perhaps the giver hadn't fully understood his or her actions. In the moments after the offering was collected and counted, they determined that the money had been given by a first-time visitor, and they pulled him aside. Did you really intend to give this much money? They asked her. I had a dream last night, she said. In the dream, someone told me to make a donation to a Christian church. I'm not a Christian, and I don't know any Christian churches. So I looked for a Christian church, and I found you. She insisted that the church keep the one million yen. After that Sabbath, the woman was never seen again. The church also never learned the source of the three million yen donation. Through such miracles, the church managed to raise the funds for the new water pipe and for the equipment for the evangelistic meetings. Ra said the miraculous donations and baptisms have helped change the atmosphere of the Amanuma Church, the largest Adventist church in Japan with 900 members. People were negative. But now they are enthusiastic, said Ra, whose picture appears left here. They know God is alive. This week's lesson has been read by Dr. Percy Harold from Queensland, Australia. It is brought to you by Hope Channel, the Sabbath School Department, and through the services of Christian Services for the Blind. A video of this podcast also occurs on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful. 
This week's lesson has been read by Dr. Percy Harold from Queensland, Australia. It is brought to you by Hope Channel, the Sabbath School Department, and through the services of Christian Services for the Blind. A video of this podcast also occurs on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.